www.ogaccountability.com. We were sitting there talking about men being men. I'm going to put it on here if I can, if it's not copyright infringed. Mm-hmm. Ah, shoulder, man. I should probably put the sling on, but I'm stubborn. Yeah. Um, two nights ago, I, I watch movies, but it's normally older movies. So probably for the 50th time, maybe exaggerating, I put on uh, Parenthood with Steve Martin from the, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. 89. There is a portion of the movie where they have to go to Kevin, his son's school. Yeah. And they sit down with the school counselor and a psychiatrist. And they basically tell Steve Martin and his wife, your son is a distraction. We have to spend 20 to 30% of our time keeping your son engaged. It's not fair to the other kids. The kids are getting behind. And Steve Martin's just sitting there staring at him and his wife's staring and he stops and he looks at his wife and he looks back at them. Then he looks back at his wife. He's like that because you let him do this. And she said, well, you let him watch whatever. Boy, how times have changed. Now it would be, no, it's your fault. It's the school's fault. It's the school's fault. Yeah. And. Absolutely. With that in mind, I don't think Kevin should come back here next fall. I'm going to recommend that he be transferred to a school that offers special education classes. You mean because he's so smart? Well, actually, I mean a class for children with emotional problems. Hi. Sorry I'm late. Uh, You must be the Buckmans. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Lucas. Dr. Lucas is a child psychologist. He's been observing Kevin for the last couple of months. Why? Mr. Buckman, this is a public school. 38 kids to a class. We estimate that Kevin's teacher spent at least 20% of her time dealing with Kevin. That class is going to finish the year behind. It isn't fair. Kevin is a very sweet, very sensitive, extremely tense little boy. He needs some special attention. It's because he was first. Mm -hmm. It's because he was our first. I I mean, I think we were very tense when Kevin was little. If he got a scratch, we were hysterical. But the third kid, you know, he, he let him juggle knives. On the other hand, Kevin may have been like this in the womb. Recent studies indicate that these things are all chemical. She smoked grass. Kill! I never smoked when I was pregnant. Yeah, but in college you were like a chimney. I thought you were going to join a, a reggae band. Ago. I'm just saying there could have been some chromosome <gasps> distortion. Well, you, you you let them do anything. What you you let them watch TV just well, like that. So we'll that. throw the TVs out. We'll put the TVs right. in the garbage then. And you and I will or we'll, we'll perform more some Shakespeare or some. I'm just a little thrown off by this. Gil, Karen, you should not look upon the fact that Kevin will be going to a special school as any kind of failure on your part. No, I'll blame the dog. In an educational environment that's more sensitive to his needs. All right, look, first of all, Kevin is not going to a special school. Whether it's right or not, there's a stigma. People are cruel, especially children, and I won't subject Kevin to that kind of cruelty. If we have to, we'll send him to a private school. I don't care what it costs, I'll get a second job. Mr. and Mrs. Bachman, this is a problem that won't just go away. Well, if we need to, we'll send Kevin to a, a private therapist. That's right. Look, it's a problem. We're aware of it. But we're his parents. We can handle it. Real men take responsibility. Yeah. <clears throat> and real men know and admit when they're wrong. Yep. Maybe not in the heat of the moment. <laughs> yeah. Once you let it yeah, simmer like, a little while, like, and you're like, oh, I was wrong. Yeah, I was wrong on I that wrong. one. I probably should have, you know, thought that one through. And in relationship and friendship. Yeah, I've been there. Oh, God, oh, I've been yeah. there. It's something about eating crow. I got oh, a, man. I got a good friend retired, uh, retired HPD. He always says, you better salt and pepper those words because if you have to eat them later, you want them to oh, taste yeah. good. But we were talking just about what what happened to this what is what has become of this passive 
non-masculine generation and it's carried over into the church it's carried over into politics it's carried now it's carrying over into our our military oh yeah dude have you seen some of the military leadership lately like are we are you kidding me like this is what we're doing here look at our secretary of defense dude what is going on it's 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 almost like it's a methodical plan yeah the desensitizing of america demoralizing demoralizing there you go that's yeah. a better word demoralizing yeah. and get people to a position that if you want to stand up for yourself you almost feel bad well it's it's not easy being that guy man i mean have i been wrong before absolutely i've been wrong i've been wrong a lot but um you know you're a hundred percent accurate when you say that this passive um, philosophy is spreading like wildfire throughout the United States. Um, I look at our generation, right? And it's funny because I sent over some TikTok videos to my kids the other day, and it was talking about Generation X and how we're kind of like the last generation of the, you know, the fuck around and find out. Absolutely. Generation. Precisely. Yeah, we are. And people don't understand us, man. Like, I, I know there's a lot of my friends that, that, that are, they're just like me. It's because of the way that we were raised. You know, we were, I truly feel like we were different. I mean, you know, I was born in the seventies, you know, we were coming right out of the Vietnam war in the sixties. And then, you know, all the civil rights movement. I was talking to my daughter last night and it never dawned on me as a kid that just 10 years prior to my birth, we still had segregation uh, or not necessarily segregation, but, you know, Martin Luther King was killed in 68. You know, I was born nine years later. And then not only, you know, just five, six years later, I'm in, I'm in school. It's been 15 years since desegregation, you know, and it's like, I never realized it when I was a kid, you know, um, but where are where are all the men like MLK, right? Like Malcolm X, like JFK, like RFK, like um you know um the Joe Liebermans, the, General Patton. Patton's the you know Joe Lieberman just Schwarzkopf. died. Uh, Schwarzkopf. Um you know where are the men like Mattis? General Mattis. Mad dog. You know where where are they? You know, um, I think that they truly reside within our generation because it's like the generations after us, they're just so damn passive, you know? Um, and I know that there's a lot of people who don't appreciate my direct speak, but dude, I don't have time to sit and listen to a whole bunch of words and, you know, conversations about shit that we can resolve in a matter of minutes you know um i was telling my daughter last night you know I, I i just didn't realize that just within a short period of time after my birth that we had we were living in a different world and we've progressed so much in a short period of time you know what i think i honestly think that the best time and this is probably because i was a kid but was from like from my birth to like 1994 Dude, those were awesome times, man. We didn't have this technology, this technological leash, you know. Kids wanted to say something, they said it, you know, we handled it. You wanted to be bullied, let's you want to be a bully, let's be a bully. You know, let's we have we have a beef, let's let's settle it. Let's shake hands when we're done and then let's either decide we're going to be friends. Most of the time you ended up friends or sometimes you just went your own ways and it was over. And you just learned to avoid you them. You just learned to avoid people, right? these kids can't avoid them now they can't avoid it because they can't get away from from this thing right here right but you know this passiveness within our society is what's going to get our asses whipped in any type of conflict you know why the american people are not really pissed off on both sides about this invasion at the southern border is beyond me you know the democrats that support joe biden and continue to say oh well you know people have a right to migrate to the united states yeah they do they have a right there's policies and there's procedures and there's laws that allow you to do that 
you know, uh, my family came to the United States in the late 1800s, early 1900s from Sicily. Did it right. You know, I got a buddy of mine right now that I served with um, on the counter assault team in presidential detail. His wife is Canadian. You know, we had a conversation with him at dinner here, I don't know, three or four weeks ago. And, and she brings up a good point. She's like, look, I mean, I came to the United States. Uh, I was dating him and I was going to school here. I did it the right way. It took me 10 years, 15 years to get my citizenship. That's the problem. That's the true problem is the policies in which the United States have in, has in place. It takes too damn long. Right. And I think I've digressed a little bit. So let me let me re, let me rein us back in. We're talking about passiveness. Right. And we talk about men in American society. Um, one of the best books I ever read was. Um, uh, God, I just had a blank. Uh, it was you weren't going to say 1984, were you? No, it wasn't 1984. It was. Um, God, I'll think of it here in just a Wow, I just had a I just had a complete brain fart. We had a Gen X moment. Yeah, we did. Um Oh god. I, god, I, I can't I can't remember. I just had a I just had a brain fart. Hopefully we can edit that, but um but anyhow, in the book it's it's it it talked about what a man is supposed to be. Right? It talked about, you know, what a godly man is supposed to be. And, you know, you go to, you go to most church services on Sunday, you got a pastor up there, you know, telling you, you know, turn the other cheek, you know, be the bigger person. And listen, there's a time and a place for that, but God didn't make us in, in, in Jesus never intended for us to just take shit, you know, from people and not no, no repercussions, you know, uh, being, uh, enforced upon these individuals right and i'm not saying going out and just start smacking people around but you know that's not um the perception that i have of the god that i serve he meant for men to be men well look at peter right peter took that sword out when there was a whole legion of soldiers soldiers and cut that guy's ear off and people say yeah but christ healed his ear well why didn't christ stop peter from doing from it in doing the first it. place yeah yeah it's um I don't know, man. It's uh, it's really unsettling to me that we have this this uh, society of men that just they just don't want to um, they don't want conflict. We go into our churches and our churches don't want conflict. Um, you know, and, and the older I've gotten, the more I have distanced myself from the actual facility you know, of going to church. And I know people are going to disagree with that. You know what? Guess what? That's good. I'm glad you disagree. That's your right to disagree. You do what you do with your faith. I do what I, excuse me, what I do with my faith. And I am 100% a Christ follower. I believe in that. But I also believe that, that, that God never meant for us to be put in a box, you know, and you go into church on Sunday and, you know, my wife and I have this conversation all the time because she's, she's, you know, it's a blind follower. I question everything. Right. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a part of me that just doesn't like going to the, to the actual faci facility anymore because <clears throat> I find it hard to somewhat relate to some of the other men in the church and I think the reason why is because they probably experienced the th same things that I've experienced in my life. They probably have the same questions. It's just, <laughs> it's just, I'm open about it. <laughs> well, you know, it's like, I'm honest about it. Right. And, like, and, and I'm not, let's not play Pollyanna and act like everything's great. And I'm not plugging. I'm not even going to say the name of our yeah. where I go to church. You have never been in a room with such real men, but to where, if 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 you come and you need help they're going to bend over backwards to help you if you come to take advantage and disrupt you may get smacked in the face yeah. real probably yeah. quicker than you think yeah and that is that's just it yes blessed are the peacemakers i'm not going to go out and disrupt peace my father good example i've been in situations growing up as a kid and here's what would happen he was always kind to people but i've been in situations where people try to take advantage a guy showed up one time and was mad because my brother was dating his niece and made a comment that basically he was going to kill my brother. 
My dad picked him up and pinned him against the wall. Good. And all the men stood around like, you came to the wrong place to start that. I've been in a place where my dad's like, hey, hey, no, 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 we're, this is where we stop. Yeah. Because you're trying to do this and I'm not going to do that. If you proceed, you get a different me. Yeah. Yeah, that, and that's the thing, man, is that's that's the type of men that God intended us to be, man. You know, not some passive, meek, you know, weak person. Um, and I'm not saying that all churches are the same way. And, I, hell, I, I love my church. You know, our pastor is not that way. I love him to death, Ca- uh, Pastor Kevin Heron at the fellowship. Him and I have long conversations and talks about this. I know I'm looking at him in the, in the, in the camera right now. But uh, he knows that I'm a work, <laughs> you know, he knows that. Um, but, you know, man, I just um, the older I've gotten, the more I realize that we came in this world by ourselves. We're going out by ourselves. The decisions that we make are our decisions. The relationship that we have with God is our relationship. He wants us to lead others to Christ he wants us to be good examples, not by our works necessarily, but by our actions. And we can get into that conversation in a little bit, works versus actions. Well, if you have true faith, you the works have, the works will right. follow. Yeah, and that's the, that's right, man. And, you know, um, I, 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 I can't stand uh, an individual that just can't think for themselves, man. And it's like, you know, it's like regurgitating what their pastor said. And it's like, well, what do you think about that? Well, let me call my pastor. Yeah. Let me ask you about that. How do you feel about that? You know, because like, I I truly believe that, you know, it's hard for me to relate to a lot of the guys in the church that I, you know, I I just, I don't know, man, the older I've gotten, I just, I just want to be, I want to be left alone in my faith. You know, I don't want to feel like I'm obligated to do anything. You know, I talk to people all the time and they say, you know, well, do you go to church on Sunday? Well, I used to. I used to go to church on Wednesday and Sunday. And I, guess what? I used to participate in uh, in a weekly Bible study. And I also used to be uh, a youth pastor. Um, and it just looking back at it now, I think it was good for me for that season in my life. But the older I get, I just I just I just want to be left alone in my faith if in in the problem i have a lot with a lot of people is that if i tell you i'm good in my faith i don't need you to continue to try to convince me just because you don't see me on sundays that pisses me off are you sure you're good yeah tell me why you're good yeah well i haven't seen you why haven't you been coming it's none of your business because i don't feel like i have to you know my i have church every day just recently um in the past I don't know, my brain's a little fogged, but yeah. I stood up in front of the whole church and said, I need to explain this to you. And I said it kind of sternly, but I meant it with complete, not yeah. contrite a heart. When I'm at the grocery store with my daughter and you see me, don't come up asking about revelations. Yeah. I'm in the office of a father. If I invite you to my house and we're having dinner, I didn't invite you over for Bible study. Right. I invited you to talk. Hey, what's going on in your life? How's work? Man, did you catch that game? I want to know who you are. And if you think I have to be on point at all times for your spiritual growth, you don't have any growth. Yeah. You don't, you don't have a foundation. <clears throat> I'm here f- to follow Christ to the best of my ability. I have to take care of me. And if you got a call every time you have a skint knee and all that stuff, no, don't get me started. <laughs> you don't have faith. Yeah. You got a hotline. Yeah. Now, if you're sick, you're in the hospital, yeah. the Bible does say, hey, call them. We'll, we'll get people praying for you. Mm-hmm. If you need me to be there, I'll be there. I've sat in homes where people lost children. They needed somebody there at that time. But if you had an argument with your wife, what the heck am I supposed to yeah, do? I'm going to make sure you're not going to kill each other. And then I'm going to be like, handle your business. Hand, figure it out. Yeah. You know, I I, um, I think people, people rely, and I know that this is not going to go over well, but I think people rely too much on the church as a facility and their pastor. I would never want to be a pastor, man. I don't, I don't envy you brother, because people want to bring, like you said, every small issue in their own life that they can't handle to you to resolve. And most of them, when you give them advice, they don't listen to it anyway. 
They just want I've, to talk gotten, to make themselves yeah, feel I've good. I've gotten to the point where I don't even like to give advice anymore, you know, because people people don't listen. They're going to do what they want anyway. And I, I always try to preface that, like, all right, you're coming to me for advice. Are you going to take my advice or do you just need me to talk you through this thing and then you're going to do what you want anyway? You know, but it's it's I've been burned. I don't know how many times. Like, dude, you asked me. I told you. You you did what you want to do anyway. So why did you even waste my time? The older I've gotten, just I, my time is valuable. Yes. You're not going to get a lot of it unless there's some substance there, right? And Mike, you just you hit you hit some a nerve when you're dealing sometimes with older people, 60s, 70s, 80s, and you think they're rude. No, they just don't have time for they, BS anymore. That's right. Give them the facts. Yeah, that's all me, they just want. Just talk straight to me, man. That's like. Um, I had a conversation with my buddy yesterday about the business and everything. And I've gotten to where, you know, we're going into year four. My business is growing. Um, you know, there's peaks and there's valleys. And, you know, if I had a dollar for every minute that I wasted on people just either trying to bullshit their way with me or try to sell me some nonsense, um, I'd be rich already, you know? And so, I've just gotten to where I don't allow anybody to capitalize on my time for bullshit. You know, if there's nothing, and this sounds selfish, if it's not fruitful for me um, or for them, if we're just talking to talk, to continue to have conversation, I don't want to do it. Or when you're having that conversation and the second time they repeated themselves, it's like, okay, now we're in circles. Well, it's like we had a meeting and now we're having, I mean, we've got multiple clients. It's like, we've done your, we've done your assessment. We've given you, what you need we've laid out a strategic plan moving forward um we've quoted you to to mitigate all these things that we've identified you want to have another meeting for what well we just want to talk through it again okay then you go talk through it again and then it's like let's schedule another meeting per my first meeting (laughs) it's like come on man don't waste my time right so like I, i i had a conversation with a buddy this week um partner and we've got a client in another state that he's calling me about hey did you ever respond to this person i responded to him like a month ago well they haven't seen any i haven't seen any follow-up from you well there's nothing else to say well they want to know they want to have a meeting to talk about x y and z i'm like i have nothing further to say i'm not going to continue to give more of my time to say the same thing for them to tell me again that they don't have the funds or the resources I've given them solutions. They either have the money to pay for it or they don't. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to do it. You know, don't waste my time anymore. It's valuable. And I think in business, we were like that a lot, a lot 30 and 40 years ago. Yeah. Now, now everything's the, the Burger King way. Dude. There's so much competition. Well, if you don't do exactly what I want, they will. And there's always somebody cheap that's selling te- military gear. Yeah. I have people all the time get hold of me. Well, I can get it cheaper. No, you can't because you already have it. Yeah. If you want it, that's what it costs. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing is I'm not watering down this crap anymore, but you know, you know, getting back to, to, you know, men being men, you know, um, I don't know, man. I, I just, the older I get, I just, I just, I want to worship my God in my place where I'm at. You know, I've realized that a true relationship with God is not in a building. It's every day. It's me driving up here to your house, having this conversation. It's us. This is church, right? It's me praying on the way up here about situations or things in my life that I need divine intervention on. It's that conversation that I have with God in my head, talking to him, right? Um, It's, you know, out in nature. It's sitting in a deer blind. It's climbing a mountain. It's, you know, riding on a boat. It's looking at a sunset. That is where I feel closest to God, right? A building doesn't necessarily do that for me. You know, and I will go back and I will quote, you know, my pastor is like, you know, it's important for my wife and men, I'm not telling you to just disregard your wife's wishes. I try my best, um, to value what she, you know, she likes going to church. She likes the whole worship, praise and worship deal. I know you're awesome. And I, and I love it. It's for me. I love that. I do too. But, you know, 
it's just difference of opinion, you know, and, and her and I've had that conversation. We go back and forth. I love her to death. God, she's the best, you know, I'm not just saying that to get brownie points. I mean, I couldn't have asked for, a I'm going to edit spouse. it out. That's all right. <laughs> no, I couldn't have asked for a better spouse, man. I mean, but, um, she feels the need to do to go to church. I mean, like I said, we used to do everything together. We used to go to we used to go together. And I've told her now, like, look, you don't need me. You don't need me to go. If you if that's what you need, you want to go feel fed, go. You know, maybe it'll weigh on me, and I'll eventually, you know, go. And I go. I just don't go every week like I used to. I yeah. haven't been in a while, honestly. But like I told her, you don't have to have me to go to feed you, right? I don't. I don't need you. I don't lean on you to feel you know, close to God. And this is just my, you know, guys, this is my opinion. This is how my relationship with God, but I don't need that structure. You know, that's just, I could be wrong according to biblical scholars and that's okay. Yeah. But I know what feeds my heart. You know, everybody has to find their position. Oh, I think if you want to say on judgment day, there'll be a lot of people entering those pearly gates you thought shouldn't be there. And there will be a lot of people that you thought should be there that aren't there that aren't there. Yeah. And, I mean, it's like, do you, are, is it like a free pass because you go to church every Sunday to get into the pearly gates? I don't think so. And you know, one, and I got to go back to where I, to where I attend church. I love going because the realness of the men and I call them men of God in there. Yeah. But I gleam from them. There's people in there. I get wisdom from like, yeah, of course I, I, I glean from the sermon, but a, a good example, got a guy named Sean, and not uh, letting any of his business out, he and his wife overcame meth addiction. The guy is unfreaking believable. He's a hero. I just love being around him. You get around him. Yeah. And 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 here's a good example. So he's a believer now. Has, he's been drug free for many years now. We'll just say we'll just say Bob mm-hmm. was staying at his house, and Bob got out of line with his wife. Sean laid a thumping. Sean laid a thumping on him, and then it was, "I thought you were a Christian." And he's like, "Dude, you came against my wife. I You're am. in my house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to hit the road." I'm like, "Good for you, Sean." Yeah. That's, yeah. You know, in our society, they they would, you know, nowadays they would shun that. I'm like, oh, you did what? Yeah, I gave him an ass whooping that he deserved. You know, and that's 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 the part I want to talk about is that, you know. I think that too often our society thinks that Christian men should just, you know, be passive. And we're not saying go to vigilante justice. No, I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> but listen, if Sean had, you know, if this guy had done this to my wife, I, he would have got an ass whooping too. A hundred percent here. You know? And so, you know, people forget that Jesus, you know, flipped over tables in the temple that, um, you know, that he, he hung out with those who needed him most. He called the, uh, he called the religious zealots vipers and, and poisonous. Yeah. Because of the indoctrination and, and the, and, um, you know, the, uh, the legality behind what their teachings were. It wasn't, it wasn't God's will that they were teaching. It was their will. It was their you know, will. it was control. It was power. Matter of fact, the reason they crucified him, people you know, say, well, he went for a pilot. Pilot wasn't, Pilate washed his hands. The yeah. reason Jesus was crucified, he stood in front of the religious people and said, I am God. And the priest rent his robe and they said, this man's got to die. Yeah. And it was the religious people that did it to him. And, and that's the thing is that people, people in those positions of power don't like individuals to be free thinkers, mm. right? They don't, you know. They wouldn't, I don't think a lot of people would like the fact that I don't necessarily need, um, to go to church on Sunday, every Sunday to, to be, to be saved. You know, um, I try to let people <clears throat> see my faith through my actions. My words aren't always good, admittedly. Um, and even my actions are not always good, but you know, there's so many things that we talk about works and, and, you know, can people um, inherit the kingdom of heaven through works? Um, I don't think necessarily works alone because, you know, the, the Bible says you have to believe, right? You have to have faith. That's the, that's the base foundation, right? Um, the works, uh, I think, are just an extra added benefit. If you're doing good, then your intentions are well, and that's going to be recognized by God, right? And, there, and there's a third part to that, and you hit it 
with, without even really knowing you were saying it, we leave out obedience. So like what you were talking about on the way here, I'm praying and I'm, I'm, I'm praying to God for these situations. That is obedience. God asks us to be obedient. And how do we know we're obedient is when we start having wrong things in our life, it's his presence and it's his spirit that makes us go, Oh, wait a second. I'm slipping in this area. Yeah. Obedience. Go back to, so is showing up to just a building every Sunday? Is that a form of obedience? It's a form of submission. But what God asked us to do was believe on him, have faith, and be obedient. Man, some of the most hateful people I know are Christ followers. I can't and say. go to church I, every Sunday. I, I, there's a lot I could. I'm, okay, I'll share this with you. Did a podcast with a guy recently. Haven't put it up yet. Since I have so many of them, nobody will know who it is. He was part of an organization since he got out of seminary. Now for almost 20 years. Had a guy in the church, and I'm going to try to make this quick. Had a guy yeah. in the church who was like a father in the faith to him. He just had so much respect for him. Guy who's in his 67 to 70-ish. Large organization. It's an organization, not an independent church. Mm -hmm. um, they have to have a emergency board meeting. So they call this guy in because he's part of the they don't know what it's about. Nobody does. So they're sitting there and one of the, you would call him vice president says, well, we have an issue. And everybody's like, okay. He said, brother. And he calls out this 67 year old guy. Guy's probably in his forties. This is the vice president. Yes. Mm -hmm. I saw you out with your wife at Papacito's and you were having a margarita Mind your fucking business. That's what I would have said. <laughs> uh, that's why we get along, Mike. Yeah. So the guy just sits there and he doesn't say a word. And they just chastise this guy. We can't have that part of this organization. So he sits there, doesn't say a word, and then finally says, you know, it's normally against my nature to kick up dust. He goes, called out the guy who called him out. I've been on retreat with you. And we went to dinner and you had a glass of wine. In fact... You had two glasses of wine. Well, but the Bible says that God, that Jesus turned water into wine, so it's okay. And well, when Jesus set up the church and the deacons, he first thing he said was, don't give in to too much drink. The one thing he said not to do is have a wife that's a tell bearer. But, so he sits there and he goes, I am finally to a place in my relationship with God to realize I don't need a board to make heaven my home. It's by my actions, how I treat people, my obedience and love to God. I don't need this anymore. I resign. So here's this younger guy. Watch this guy. He then goes home and tells his wife what happened and then comes back and questions the pastor. Like, before he made it back to his office, he had a forced resignation letter sent to his email saying, don't question us. We'll do what we want to do, but just don't question us. See, that's... <clears throat> That's what I'm talking about, man. There's just so much overstepping um, on behalf of some of these organizations. And that's why I always tell, like I tell my kids all the time, like, look, what's important to me is that you know that there is a God, right? That you know that there's a God, that, that, that Jesus existed, and that he is who he says that he is. Where you choose to worship him is your business, you know, um, we used to make our kids go to church all the time. And I, and I, I truly believe that the, a strong foundation in the church is important. My kids are both believers. They tend to lean a little bit towards my philosophy of that God is everywhere, you know, and that we can worship him wherever he, wherever we are. He meets us where we are. We don't have to go to him. I do think that can be a slippery slope because I have people I know that decided they're going to start a church in a bar. Oh, yeah. No, I. I, I agree with that. I, I, I disagree with I mean, you know what I mean? I, I personally feel called, called to strip clubs. <laughs> I'm going to go start <laughs> no. a strip club ministry. I'm well, just... strippers need saving too. Yes, Dave. they do. So, um, but no, and I'm, and I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that like, yes, you, you need to have a foundation. Mm -hmm. You need to be rooted in faith. You need to, to understand that there's a God, that Jesus existed. I would encourage my kids to take their kids, my grandkids, future grandkids to church to get them that base foundation so that they understand, right? I, I absolutely encourage that. But like I tell my kids all the time, you can talk to God whenever you want. It doesn't have to be on Sundays. Absolutely. It can be in your it can be in your bed, it can be on the soccer field, it can be, you know, wherever. It can be in your car. 
You can be on the side of a mountain looking at a sunset or, or a sunrise. Sometimes that's the best place that's you have absolute. the best interactions with God. I, I tell my kids all the time, just be quiet. You know, sometimes just be quiet. You know, and some people say, oh, man, go lock yourself in a closet. Okay, if that works for some people. But what works for me is being out in nature. That's what works for me. I mean, there's nothing more that I like than to go hiking in the mountains of Nevada, Utah, Idaho, you know, whatever, uh, Colorado, and just sit and be still and be quiet. I think that's the biggest problem as, as Christians is that we're, we're, we're constantly looking for someone to feed us the next the new step, guru. right? Mm-hmm. And, and when we, we have, and God provides for us, man, we just have to be quiet enough to listen, right? We have to be still and we have to be quiet and let him speak to us. Um, and I think that the, the majority of, of us, um, just humanity, we are always on the go. Nonstop. Right? Nonstop on the go, in. right? We've got to be plugged in on a phone, driving a car, you know, stop, you know, and go sit on the side of a mountain, go sit on the end of a dock, you know, um, and just be quiet. You know, I, I catch myself all the time, just, you know, sitting in you know, maybe five, 10, 20 minutes, you know, if it's longer than 20 minutes, I'll probably go to sleep, <laughs> you know, I get it. older, I but, get. <laughs> but, um, I think the biggest mistake that um churches put on people is i'm curious to see what a lot of people say about how i feel about things but you know at the end of the day it's you know, it's how i feel so it doesn't really matter well there's going to be people to agree and oh, there's, there's, there's going to be, be people, people who disagree. disagree that's fine that's fine it's okay i don't tell them how to live their life i don't tell them how to worship it is what it is what works for me works for me but i think one of the greatest um issues that I have with the church um, is I feel like the church and you know denominations at least when I grew up uh, and and maybe a little bit to this day is that I feel like they try to keep people in fear right mm-hmm. that they that there's this guilt right um, I've talked to young kids that I was you know at the school district with or, or kids that my kids have brought to the house and we talk about faith we talk about these particular types of things salvation and even with my own kids is that there's this overwhelming um, sense of guilt amongst amongst a lot of these young kids which I think drives them away from inheriting the kingdom of heaven and I like I tell them all the time, listen, it, that is the Holy Spirit. You have the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit working within you, telling that you that something is wrong. It's discernment, right? yeah. You should definitely listen to that. Where we have a problem is that kids don't know that continuing to make that same mistake is what's keeping them there, right? Right. There has to be a genuine effort to, to get yourself out of that, right? Repentance means to turn away. It does, right? And that's what I tell them is that we don't serve a God that is constantly wanting us to live in the past. We can't see the fruits of what he has for us by looking in the rearview mirror. We have to look through the windshield. And so... You can't stay in a position of guilt, you know, consistently, you know, worrying that you're never going to inherit the kingdom of heaven, that you're a sinner, that you, you know, that is what keeps you in the past. You've got to look through the windshield to keep going forward. You, God is not a God of fear. You no, can't constantly. You can't, you can't fear God. You know, I mean, you can't live in fear. You can't live in guilt. And I think that a lot of churches, they, 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 well, a lot they, of them hold people there. They right? want you they to want be you in there. service to the church. And not to God. Not to God, yeah. And and that's the thing, you know, it's like, um, you know, I used to be a part of a, a men's group, and we would have guys that were in addiction, right? And they're coming out of addiction. And it's it's like that's what they always they always talked about. And that's what all the pastor or the, the group leader would want to talk about their addiction. It's like, look. They know they're an addict. They're, yeah, we've got to move forward, right? We can't keep going backwards. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, they were an addict. They're coming to us for help. They have they've kicked that habit. 
we can't keep going backwards and looking back at our past transgressions because when you do that, you can't move forward, right? And so, you know, that's what I tell my kids all the time is, look, if you mess up, you make a mistake, genuinely go to God and seek repentance and confess your sins and then move forward. You've got to move forward because you if you to. keep looking backwards, you're never going to, to truly receive the fruits that God has for you, you know, and I, and that's one of the biggest issues I have with a lot of churches is I feel like they want to keep people there. You know, like I've got a, I've got a buddy of mine who's former gang member and, you know, he's doing very, very, very well now he's in the, in, in, uh, you know, being a pastor and, and motivational speaker and all that. But, you know, one of the things that I, I disagree with him on is that he always talks about, he wants to consistently for the last 10, 12 years that I've known him, he wants to consistently talk about his time in prison. He wants to consistently talk about his time as doing drugs as a gang member. And that's, that's great. It's your testimony, but know your audience. We've got to move forward, man. Yeah. Like use it as a base reference, but it can't continue to be who you are. It's not who you are anymore. It's who you were. It's who you were, right? Like you got to move forward, man. And so I think that the church is doing a disservice to the youth. I mean, I've gone to youth camps and things like that, you know, when I was a youth pastor and it's like, you got all these kids crying and, you know, and everybody's upset. And But did you give them the tools to really change their life? Dude, like, okay, they repented. Let's move on. You know, Mike, just recently, and I'm not going to get into it, but I I had a a real health scare. Mm -hmm. Like, I may not be here. And I scared the hell out of my daughter because when I didn't think I was going to be here, I had to have a real serious conversation with the 12 year old. I don't feel fully remember what I said, but it scared her enough. She wouldn't even come to the hospital. So talking with her afterwards, she won't say everything I said. She said, but dad, one thing you told me was baby, you know, I love God and I know you love God, but you have to find God who he is to you. And he can't be your dad's God. Yeah. He's got to be your God. 100% right. Let's take a break. We'll bounce back. Dude, you're so on point with that. 